Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. This video is gonna be me going back and sharing how many times I've used each of the highlighters in my collection. I recently did one for all of my blushes, and this is a resurgence of a series I did a few years ago. And so some of the products I've been tracking since those multiple years ago, and so I can share how many more times I've used since my first update. Like I said, I recently did this with blushes and I'm doing highlighters today. I think my other two videos that I'll do moving forward are eyeshadow palettes and lip products. So stay tuned with those. I'm gonna start from least used all the way up to my most used, and I'm gonna list all of the highlighters that I'm gonna be talking about today. If you want to maybe pause the video and guess in the comments which highlighter you think is my most used. For me, uh, my blush, my most used blush, I think I was a little surprised by, but my highlighter, I pretty much knew which one was my most used, and I'd be interested to hear what you think is my most used highlighter too. So let's get started. I have three highlighters that I've only used one time. Two of them are newer to my collection, and one of them I tried once, didn't like it, and so I decided to declutter it. Let's talk about the one from my Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm Face Palette first. This one I've only used one time. Um, it is one of my newer highlighters, so I just haven't had a chance to wear it a ton. I do currently have a Hit and Switch Project Pan happening where I am rotating through all of my products, including my highlighters, where I'm trying to use each of them 10 times. So I do imagine I'll have more uses to share in future videos like this down the line because I do plan on using it 10 times within that project. It just hasn't come into the rotation yet. This is a baked formula and it is a beautiful like gold color. It's one of those that you can buff into your skin and it won't really emphasize texture. So that one I've only used once, but it's not because I don't like it, it's just because it's newer and I haven't been able to focus on it. The next one is one that I don't like the color on me and it's from this Flower Beauty Highlighter Trio. I have the lighter version of the two. This is in Champagne Shimmer and I'm referring to this gold one right here. This is just too dark for my skin tone I, and it also is very yellow which I don't think is very flattering for me. Also across the board I'll talk about the other two later on in the video because I have used those two pinky shades more but this is a very blinding highlight and it's very noticeable. It's kind of hard to buff in and maybe take down that amount of shine. It's just not really the formula for that. It's just very blinding. If you're into that you're gonna love this but it's not really my style anymore so I've decided to pass it on while it's relatively new. And the third one that I've only used one time is this mini from Becca. It's a little mini highlighter. I got it during like a Black Friday sale and a little kit. It came with two other minis, which I'll talk about later. And the reason why I've only used Champagne Pop once is because, again, this is just slightly too dark for me. Um, I think this will work better once I have a little bit more of a tan, which is not often. Even in the summer, I don't really get much darker because I don't spend that much time outside. And if I do, I'm wearing a lot of sunscreen. I just don't really hold a tan very easily. And this one, I would say, is a little less yellow. I mean, it's sort of similar to the gold, but it has a different type of formula where it is easier to take it down and buff it out and make it match your skin tone a little bit better. So I, if I'm gonna choose between a gold highlight that is slightly too deep or something for when I use when I'm more tan, I'm not gonna go for the flower one, I'm gonna go for Champagne Pop. So again, I've only used this once, not because I don't like the formula or the shade, it's just something that only works during a certain time of the year. The next one I wanna talk about is another one from that mini trio, and this one is in the shade Rose Quartz. And this one is definitely more appropriate for my skin tone. It has a little bit of a pinky undertone and it's beautiful. It's definitely more unique in my collection. Again, it is sort of similar to that middle pink shade in the highlighter trio, but this is just a much more blinding formula and it is more brightening. I find that that pink, it's a little bit lighter, a little more brightening. That used to be my jam a couple years ago. I loved cool tone pink highlighters. Charming Pink from Laura Geller was like one of my favorite highlighters, but it's just not my taste anymore. If I do want more of a pinky cheek, I do like this type of formula. I like being able to blend it and buff it out a little bit to take down the amount of shine. If you wanted to build this up to be very reflective, you could, but the formula is just a lot more easy to work with. And so I've used this one five times. For the next one, we're going back to this flower palette. I've technically decluttered it, but I just wanted to talk about it since I had the numbers. And I'm referring to this middle shade here. This is 
It doesn't have a name, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think there's a name for it, but it's this middle shade here, the more pinky one. I've used this one eight times. I was working on it in my Hit and Switch Project Pan. This was one of the shades I was focusing on. I didn't even use it the full 10 times just because I don't really like that color on me. I've already explained why it's too bright, it's too blinding. I've decided to declutter it, so I've used it not eight times and I'm ready to pass it on. And then the next one is my first cream highlight that I'm gonna talk about. I have three cream liquid highlights and this one from Merit I've used nine times. This is definitely a more balmy type of product. And this is one of those products that doesn't really have a lot of base pigment. It's more the reflect that shows more so than like the base color. And I do find that that is really flattering on a lot of skin tones. I think there's two or three shade options in this and I have the lightest one. I'm in Kava. A lot of people who like cream cheek products and don't mind it being a little bit sticky will just apply this on top of their makeup. I use it more as like an illuminating primer product where I'll put it underneath uh, foundation or maybe above foundation but before I powder just because I don't like that sticky feeling. It's not heavy or gross. It's nothing like the uh, highlighting glaze from Flower Beauty. I did not like that formula at all. That did not work for me. This one is a lot easier to work with. I do find that if you aren't careful with the um, pressure you use to apply it, it can lift the product underneath just because it is a very creamy, um, more oily formula. I keep saying oily. It's not like that should have a negative connotation. Some people really like that and I do think because it is so creamy it's really really forgiving on any texture you might have on your cheekbones. But yeah I've used this one nine times and I'm really liking it so far. Okay we're coming back to the flower palette and then we're done. <laughs> I'm talking about the last shade and that is this first shade here. This is just like a champagne pink shade. It's too light for me. It's too brightening. I don't like that type of shade or formula anymore. There's nothing necessarily wrong with the product, it's just not for me. I've used this 10 times and I'm going to declutter this. And to give you like a total number of how many times I've reached for this palette, I've used it 19 times. The next one I've used 14 times and that is the last of the Becca Mini Trio. This is in the shade Vanilla Quartz. It looks like it's really white in the pan, but when you put it on, it's more of like a champagne gold shift. I wasn't sure if I was gonna love this that much, but after using it 10 times in the Hit and Switch Project pan, I ended up finding that I really liked it. Something about in the reflect that it gives, it is noticeable and it is brightening, but it's not over the top. And it's just very flattering and really pretty. Every time I would see it in the mirror, or catch myself at a certain angle, I would just think, wow, that's really pretty. The next one is one that I've used 19 times, but I really like it and part of me kind of savors it because it's expensive. And that is the Beauty Light Wand from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Spotlight. This is beautiful. I wore it on my wedding day. It is a gorgeous uh, reflect. It looks beautiful on the skin. You can use it by itself or with other highlighters. This is one that I find I can tap on top of my foundation as a last step because it does dry down. I do think I'm more precious with it because it is very expensive and if it goes as fast as Peachgasm went because I used that one up previously and that one I feel like I didn't get enough use out of it for how much it costs because these are like $38. I shouldn't like be so precious with it that I don't ever wear it because I'm afraid of using it up too fast. Like obviously I shouldn't just wait for a special occasion. I should use it whenever I want to or whenever the look calls for it. I'm just a little bit shy about it because I don't want to use it up too fast. It's so expensive. <laughs> the next one is one that I also had in my last update so I can share the numbers with you from two years ago versus now and that is Peach Glow from Laura Geller. This one I mentioned really loving Charming Pink which is like the light pink cool tone version of this. This one is more peachy and I find that it's a lot more natural looking on the skin. Definitely looks like a highlighter but the undertone is just more flattering than Charming Pink was. And I had used this 15 times in my last update and I've used it an additional 16 times for a total of 31 uses in the past couple of years. Mind you, I have been panning highlighters, a lot of highlighters I've just been using on a more regular basis because I wanted to finish them and I have finished quite a few highlighters since that last update. So even though maybe 16 times over two Two years doesn't seem like that many uses. It kind of does when you consider for the most part I do keep using the same highlighter until it's gone. I feel like the formula is still fine. I don't find that it feels expired or feels like it's changed too much over the years, but I would like to make a point to focus on it more as it is one of my oldest highlighters. The next one I don't have a very accurate 
number because I decluttered it, gave it to my mom. She ended up giving it back to me a little while later. And I don't know if I actually tracked uses beforehand. So I'm not, I'm sure I've used it even more than I have the number for, but it's the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. So I don't actually have an accurate number for you, but 34 is the number that I have. This is a highlighter that's been around for a long time and from how people talk about this on YouTube, it seems like people either really love it or they don't like it at all. And I think the main factor is how much you apply. If you apply too much of it, it can look really powdery. Like the satin finish, the shine in here is very subtle. And so I know some people like they spray their face and then they use a fluffy brush and just kind of put it on a light layer with that setting spray. And that gives you probably the most shine that you can get out of this. You can also just put a light layer to get a little bit of a satin sheen. If you apply too much though, it will get really powdery and probably take away a lot of that satin finish. So it's something you don't wanna over apply because it can look very heavy and cakey on your skin if you do so. Even so, it's really pretty. It's great for those like supernatural days where I really, really don't want a ton of shine, but I do still want like a healthy sheen. The next one is one from my Partners in Cream Project Pan. This is from Coco Kind. It's the My Light Rose Skin Nourishing Highlighter. It's a cream highlighter stick. It's a stiffer formula than the one from Merit. And I use this kind of like as an illuminating primer. So I put it on my cheekbones, above my brow bone, and then I use it on my nose. And then I kind of like press it in, rub it in a little bit before I put on my foundation. And I find throughout the day, it helps me keep like a really healthy, creamy glow. That rose gold undertone might seem like it would be too dark, but it definitely doesn't give this level of pigment when you apply it. And I find with it being a little bit different from like a champagne or a gold or a pink, I find something about that shade is just really flattering on me. This one I've used 39 times. There is 17 grams of product in here, so it's gonna take me forever to actually finish it. If you are following my progress in my Partners in Cream Project pan, you know that the progress is very slow. I do really enjoy it, and I was surprised at how affordable this was. I think it's like $12, and you get so much product for that. I think Coco Kind should come out with more shades of this. So we're hitting our last two. The second most used highlighter in my collection is this one from Melt. It's in the shade Stargazer. And in June of 2020, in my first video like this, I had already used it 28 times. Since then, I've used it an additional 12 times for a total of 40 uses. This is still, this is a very blinding highlight. This is gonna give you a lot of shine, a lot of pigment. I do find it's a little bit easier to tone down than the flower ones were. Even though maybe this formula isn't like my exact style anymore, it is still like a very beautiful formula. It's really thin. It doesn't emphasize texture. That kind of champagne gold undertone is really, really pretty, especially when it's sheared out a little bit. It reminds me a lot of the next highlighter I'm gonna talk about, which is my most used one. And even after all these years, I still think that this is really beautiful. I feel like this is kind of underrated. Like I don't hear people talk about this anymore. And last one, probably not gonna be much of a surprise to people considering this one has pan in it. It's actually my only highlighter that I own right now that has pan. And it is the Filmstar Bronze and Glow Highlighter from Charlotte Tilbury. I have already used up the bronzer side and I have a really big pan in the highlighter side. In my last update, I had already used this 100 times. Since then, I've used it an additional 22 times for a total of 122 uses. So that is almost, what, three or four times more than my second used highlighter, because this one I've used 40 times and this one I've used 122 times. Still really love it. It's not like a natural highlight. You can make it look more natural, but you can also build it up, but it's just not as heavy or blinding as, again, the flower highlighters. There is a reason why people hype this duo up so much. It is just a beautiful highlighter, a really nice natural champagne-y gold color. I don't think I'm gonna try to pan it this year, but I think maybe next year I will try to finish it. It'll feel like such an accomplishment to have finished this entire product. This is one of my more expensive products in my collection, so to, to be able to finish it all the way to the end would feel very satisfying. So those were all the products I had to talk about. Let me know if your prediction was right, if you were right about the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow Highlighter. Now that I've given more of an explanation on what type of highlighters I prefer, I would love to hear any recommendations you have. I'm not really in the market for more highlighters, like I definitely have plenty to work with, but it is interesting to know what type of products out there people are really loving and why. And it's not like I'm never gonna buy a highlighter again. Like I don't mind having a larger highlighter 
highlighter collection to have different formulas and colors to choose from. Like I said, stay tuned for my other two videos that I'm going to do like this with eyeshadow palettes and with lip products. I'll probably do one a month. If you're interested on how I track my uses, I use a Google spreadsheet and I did do a video explaining how I keep track of everything. So if you'd like to create a spreadsheet of your own or just like to see how I keep track of these numbers over time, I will have that video in the cards for you. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.